by tomorrow he'll be accelerating up to 17 and a half thousand miles an hour but if there were any last minute nerves Tim Peake certainly wasn't betraying them today facing the press from behind a glass screen he's now in strict quarantine catching a cold at this late stage would be disastrous you seem absolutely cool as a cucumber about this mission uh, but what words of, of reassurance do you use uh, for your family? I've made sure that we've spoken about the training. They've been to see me at Johnson Space Center um, through the space station mock-up facilities. They've seen where I'm going to eat, where I'm going to sleep, where I'm going to use the loo, which is the most exciting part for them. His family, including father Nigel, are all here to watch tomorrow's launch. Throughout the lead-up, they've been proud of the legacy Tim will give the next generation. What he is saying is, you don't have to go to university. I didn't. I got my degree later. Um, you don't have to be an A-star student all the time. Um, you just have to be someone who believes and perseveres in what they want to do. He's beaten 8,000 candidates to secure a place on this mission. He'll be away for Christmas, but a Christmas pudding is already waiting for him on the space station, and he's already got a plan for a post-Turkey movie. And on board the space station early this year, um, Scott Kelly was the first person to deploy a projector and a, uh, a flat screen as well, um, a white projector screen. So we'll be able to watch Star Wars up on board the space station at some point. When these 28 million horsepower rockets kick in, he might wish he could perform a Jedi mind trick to block out the extreme G-force. But at least he will have the force of the Russian Orthodox Church behind him. Priests bless the Soyuz today with holy water. Well, here at launch pad one, now the blessing is complete, the final checks can get underway. But Tim Peake has just one job, to get a good night's sleep. Dam Rivers, ITV News, Baikonur, Kazakhstan.